Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joel Duggan and we're hanging out here on a Friday. And it is Lego Friday. As has been the tradition for well over a year now. And it's something I really enjoy. We're working on set 75382. The TIE Interceptor from the Star Wars Ultimate Collector series. And this was of course uh, brought to you by you folks. Uh, during my birthday month of April, a lot of the bits and donations that came in on the stream were used to pick this up. So that is where it is from. And we are gonna pick up on bag eight, nine, and probably 10. They're not very big bags today. So we'll probably get all three done. So that's where we're gonna start. Mind Trip Media with 100 bits to kick off the stream. Thanks very much. Hope you're enjoying the day. I don't know what it is about this week, but this week has just completely disappeared. In some ways it's good, but in other ways, I re really did not accomplish anything that I wanted to accomplish. I feel like May has been like that in general. I can't believe that June starts tomorrow. Dan, Blast Jordan, Sweet Sandy, Cosmic, good to see everybody. I feel like I bumped the table. Does this look straight? I got my days mixed up yesterday too. I was talking to a friend last night and I thought it was Wednesday and it was Thursday evening. <laughs> it was like all of a sudden my brain was just a day ahead of time. This looks like different stuff than what we were working on before. That's good. It won't be a complete repeat of uh, things. More revolvers. So it looks like we're going to be doing some some panels maybe inside of the the cockpit that could be on its way. <clears throat> Hunter says very happy this week is over. As tomorrow I'm heading off for my best friend's wedding. Oh, that's very cool. Congrats to your friend. Almost all of my friends are married already. Is it a, uh, is it like a trip? Like, a, do you have to travel for it? Is it a destination wedding? I've only ever really been to a handful of weddings. Twenty years married for Cosmic and Mr. Cosmic this December. That's really cool. I was out for beer with the boys on Thursday last week. And one of my friends, Scott, is uh, someone that I've known since we were five. And he's been with his current wife. Uh, current wife like it's like there's a change like there's a change in seasons um i was gonna say current partner but i don't think he would mind if i said wife uh he's been with his wife married for 
I don't know quite how long. It's not quite 25. Um, but they've been together since high school. So like a, like a very long time. Which is just really cool. You don't often see that very much these days. CJ, good to see you. Good to see you. How's the baseball game? Game was good, says CJ. Spreading my birthday fun out all week. Minecraft gets 15 days. Why shouldn't I? Hey, you know what? I've got friends that do that for the almost the entire month. I sort of did that. I, I was hanging out with friends for birthday-related reasons for over a week, I would say. Between the family event on the Sunday and my actual birthday and then meeting people later that week. I'd say it was... Uh, I'd say a, like a week and a half or so. Proper thing. Jay Noy, hello, hello. He's over here. When's the first day of summer? It's like the 20th or the 21st of June, something like that. It's already starting to get pretty warm around here. I've been sleeping with a fan on, and I certainly almost always have a fan going when I'm in the studio. It's okay in the mornings, but by around 11 o'clock, I definitely have to turn something on. Yeah, I think I'm just going to move this. Unfortunately, my vinyl top to the um, table here has got some wrinkles in it and I can't seem to get it to lay flat. I might have to look up a different way to do that. If it was something I was planning on keeping in this location long term, I would maybe permanently affix the vinyl top to it. I might do that in another setup if I eventually get into a house and I have a proper setup with things attached to walls like cameras and lights, then I could see myself doing a more permanent tabletop. I don't know whether white would be too bright. Because apparently <clears throat> there's a, a certain desk from Ikea that a lot of Lego builders use as Lego tables because it turns out that the dimensions of the table uh, work out perfectly with like base plates, like those 32 by 32 Lego base plates. And so the idea is that if you were doing a Lego city, you could totally 
Um, you could totally uh, have it like spaced out perfectly. I might squeeze those in there, you know? Sometimes my brain is more concerned about space than it is about color. Just in the beginning of June, says Blast Jordan, and the rain has been like it's been from August. I mean, I don't mind the rain, but it's a bit too much rain. Is it causing problems, or is it just, um, or is it just like, you know, bad weather? I, uh, I have not really been minding the rain around here. It's been off and on. We haven't really had much more than one or two sunny days in a row the last week or two. And I'm all right with it, because this time last year we were dealing with uh, a lot of forest fires in the province well i mean canada canada right now is actually dealing with some forest fires out west but uh it was definitely being felt a lot more in the maritimes uh and specifically nova scotia last year and not a province that was prepared for that and it showed um and thankfully you know i don't recall if anybody died but it like it was still pretty tragic people lost homes that kind of stuff not good overall I really think I've put myself in a bind here. I'm not sure how I'm going to get out of this weird little puzzle I've made for myself. But quite happy for the rain as of right now. Would like to spend more time on a patio, perhaps with a pint. There's these weird little specialty pieces. We used these on the outside of the model last week. And then we've also got these revolvers and they're used actually inside the cockpit for some of the control panels, I think it is.
Kelberty, thanks for the lurk. Appreciate it. The cool little Minecraft pickaxe badge. Oh, I see. We're we're moderating for Tadpole. Kel, if you happen to hear this, do me a favor. Just pass on a message to Tadpole and tell him Joel said faster. <laughs> Completely out of context. I have no idea what that will do in his stream or in his chat. <laughs> but I've already done it. So the message has been sent. It can no longer be unsent. Not a terrible experience overall. Not a terrible experience overall at all. Faster. Indeed, Kelly. Indeed, Kel. That's what I said. Faster. Vamanos, minion. All right. Where? That's bag eight. And that's where we left off last week. I tried to adjust the lights this week to be less reflective. Uh, unfortunately... I don't know how that's going to work out. <laughs> I'm on it. Chaos, says Cal. Sometimes you have to start with a nice clean plate. Definitely some deja vu. Assuming we're going to be rounding out the other parts of the fuselage and cockpit. He is very confused. <laughs> well, hashtag worth it, right? I'm not sure how much of that happens on Twitch when you've got two people that are kind of in similar communities, fair amount of overlap in terms of moderators and community members and stuff, and just being able to to say stuff like that and have it be I think have it. The, I think the key with stuff like that is is knowing that the person will be probably a little confused, but then also laugh, realizing that I'm obviously being a little silly. <laughs> That's worth it. That was worth it, I think. 
What does it mean? What's in the box? That goes underneath there. I'm going to try not to miss any steps this time around. This looks like it might be a little bit different, actually. That's that, and then flip it over. This is the kind of stuff I do find really intriguing with Lego is just how very specific all these parts are. And it's meant be to um, press up against other pieces already on the model and keep this panel at a specific angle without you, the builder, having to like position it correctly or hold it in place in any way. Or, you know, like you can just put it in there tight and it's supposed to go exactly in the right spot. Am I supposed to do two of those? Right, so now we've got this. Oh, this is a much smaller version, it looks like. If he's still alive when you're done, we should just raid with the message faster. <laughs> See if I can convince everybody in chat to raid and type their hello messages, but without any spaces or punctuation, just like one long word. Hey, it's good to be here. Hope you have a nice day faster. That or just or just a wall. Just everybody just kind of like hashtag Joel raid faster. <laughs> like that's it. Just don't say nothing else. It's so bizarre how everything in this book so far has been very step by step and then here it's like here's six step and like a dozen pieces go <laughs> like just you should know what you're doing by now off you go Oh, already did that. Already did that part. That goes there. This goes there. I'm glad these are different than the other panels because it's it's always a little bit tedious when you when you're building these Star Wars ships and they look cool, but sometimes when you have to build like four of everything, it can be a little bit on the on the boring side. So obviously a little bit of asymmetry going on here. And then this connects to this side. And it's the right hand side and it goes this way. Good. 
and then that folds down like that and that folds in like that still see a little bit of blue there that's surprising So it goes on like that. And I imagine the next thing we'll be doing the other side. Word nerdify. Hello, hello. Is it harder to see when I do the assembly like in my hands versus like on the table or on, over the book versus on the table? I'm not sure what it is. This The book feels bigger than most. I feel like it takes up more space than I'm used to. Maybe it's just because the last set I built wasn't very big. Uh, tricky more because it's tiny pieces and big hands. No, that's fair. Yeah, it's a lot of really small, small stuff. That's fair. It's funny. I often think about this like uh, how my buddy Peyton talks about previously working at a casino where every time you, you know, as a, as a dealer or he was security, but like when dealers do stuff, when they put something down, there's this, there's this like flourish of like nothing in my hands, you know, like you'd kind of do that to show that there's no cards and something I just never think of, right? Because like, actually, I don't know if I've talked about this on stream. I, casinos make me really uncomfortable. I'm, I've never been a gambler. It's not something I'm into. And I find them very overwhelming. They're just loud. I don't particularly enjoy the experience. I think a lot of that too has to be just spending so many years as a younger man, as an artist, just, you know, struggling to get by when you first get out of art school and you're just kind of like, I can think of a lot of other things I'd rather do <laughs> with any potential money that I have than, you know, play cards or slot machines or anything like that. It's actually, it's why I don't like those mechanics in, in video games either. I just feel like they're a giant waste of time. RNG really bugs me. I don't like those long hunts for um gear in games that's just like hoping you get it right you know like i remember in world of warcraft like when something only had a chance to drop it's like no no no. if i've done the thing if i've done the task drop drop the gear that i want don't give me a chance i don't want to get a duplicate that i have to sell and stuff like that it doesn't feel very good as a player i don't think That's that, and that goes on. Just like that. Sensory overload, yeah. No, I, I can see that. I can see that in a casino for sure. I'm sure on a small scale, that's why I don't like it either. I don't have issues like that that would cause me to be, you know, have any kind of emergency but but i would definitely be happy to be out of there and then probably irritated while i was in there 
would definitely be how I would describe it. CJA says, I agree so much. RNG is my biggest issue with enchantments in Minecraft, whether it's enchantment table rolling or villager trade uh, re-rolling. Yeah. Yep. Especially because Minecraft players in general, as they mature, and I don't mean like mature, like from an emotional standpoint, I mean um, mature as in the, their time in the game, as they become more senior players, uh, when you know the outcome that you want exists and the only way to get it is by just brute force, it's not fun. It just, you, it feels like, it feels like chores. It feels like, you know, cleaning your room, you know, it feels like something you have to do before you can have the fun. And I understand that there's a balance between, you know, time in versus reward out, but I think that you can do a lot with something in a game design where it's an, it's an investment of time, but the outcome could be guaranteed related to the investment of time. Like if you want a really good villager trade for a low cost mending book, have there be some extra steps you have to take to get that. If you can't do those extra steps right now, then you have a mending book that is not as cheap as it could be. And you have a choice to either pay more for it now or do the time intensive stuff and then pay less for it later and then you know on down the line as as that you know goes on so i re i think that there could be more more done in that now i say more in giant air quotes because i'm not a game designer and i don't know what that more really would be and what that struggle looks like internally at, at mojang so struggle does the not struggle is the wrong word um what that process what that brainstorming process looks like i don't know but we're starting to get a little bit more shape from the top down you can start to see it's no, it's less of a circle or a sphere more of like a octagon or hexagon but you can see we've got some sides here happening and then there's obviously going to be some sort of like curve on the back and curve on the front um i say curve on the back i don't know i'm assuming there's gonna be a curve on the back the front is going to have kind of the the custom cockpit that iconic star shape um or spider web looking i guess it looks like an eyeball it's an iris kind of looking front to it ah looks like this is gonna need more parts building two of these might as well do it at the same time Again, strange that they've given us so many step-by-step -step instructions before. I mean, not that these are hard to follow, but it's just all of a sudden you're just really jamming out the content. Does anybody that's really familiar with Lego pieces know if these little gray bits that to me very much look like a game controller? Is that what they're actually meant to be? Obviously they're used in a bunch of different situations here, but is that what they are originally designed to be? Or is that what they're referred to as by the Lego community? That would be a fun website to look up and be like unique names for very unique or peculiar Lego pieces. Because, I mean, so much of it is just, like, very basic, you know, two-by-one plate, two-by-two two brick, that kind of thing. All right, so these both go on the front with the fork part going that way.
like so. Stickers, dang it. Is it the last two? I think it's the last two. So, TIE Fighter symbol. Sorry, TIE Interceptor symbol. TIE Fighter would be something different. Save your comments. one down now I can't see which way they have the sticker white dot is in the bottom right corner And that is, unless there's more, that is it for the stickers for this set, I think. I don't see any external stickers on the box, which is good. Uh, and then these get attached to the revolvers, like so. Now, where do they go? Oh, they get, they point out. Interesting. Okay. So they go in these, you can see that there's two little holes right there. So these actually don't lean in towards the, um, the pilot. They kind of sit out like a display console. Oh, crap. One of those things where you have to have the angle and the pressure just right. It honestly would have been a lot easier to do before we put these on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Angle was different than what I was expecting. It's also hard to see. Oh, there we go. That's more sturdy. Okay. That looks about right. You probably can't see that very well on camera because it's pretty dark. They are right there. Uh, I think that's the end of that. Yeah, so 95, cool. Uh, I'm going to take a short break. If you're new to the stream, I do this about once an hour. We're a little bit early, but in between bags seems to be the best time to do this. So um, before I start dishing out the next bag, we will take a short break. I'll be back in about five or six minutes.
Right, bag number nine. As I was walking away, and you have a little bit of distance from this, uh, you realize this is going to be really big because I was looking at it in context of having the picture from the box in front of me. And man, like this is uh, it's a large, a large ship because the wings are so much bigger than the actual cockpit. If somebody has a chance, can you look up the dimensions and just remind me what the dimensions are? Do I have a dedicated model storage space? Nope, the Lego store has barfed in my living room <laughs> and in my studio. Uh, wh what have I got around here? I've got uh, the Mandalorian. So I've got Din Djarin, I've got Baby Yoda, I've got Obi-Wan Kenobi, Darth Vader, and the Death Star are all just up there uh, next to my Lego desk. Then I've got the probe droid um, the Razor Crest and the Mario Piranha Plant are over on my PC. The uh, Ghostbusters Ecto-1 is just to my right off camera. That's on the other desk. But then in the living room, on display, I have the motorized lighthouse, the Star Wars UCS X-Wing, both helmets, which is Leia and Luke. And then across the top of my bookshelf, I have... X-Wing, Y-Wing, they're like the playsets. I've got a TIE Fighter playset, and I don't remember what the other ship is. Oh, it's not a ship. It's an ATST walker. Uh, and then on the TV stand, there is the Balrog and Gandalf, and then the DeLorean. So really, my living room looks like the, the Lego version of Ready Player One, which is pretty funny. So that's the iconic cockpit piece I was talking about. 1,000 bits from Cosmic Dancer. Previous bag completed bits. Thanks very much, Cosmic. That's very generous. Appreciate it. Very, very kind. I notice as we move on, we are getting fewer and fewer of these colored pieces. It's becoming more exterior grays. Lots of littles though. Yeah, I don't uh I don't have every set on display. There's a couple of smaller play sets that I got as gifts. Um I have yet to add the LEDs to any of the sets that I have, which is something I really need to do. Cuz I've got the Lego Lighthouse one and the Ecto one set. The in the idea behind those was I was going to do them on stream, but they just after opening one of them up, I think it was the Ecto one, it just looks so technical and like I feel like I can see myself like being hunched over the pieces and having them like right up close to me and I, I don't think that, that would necessarily make a good stream I'd be looking at the back of my head maybe if i had a different camera angle um and for that i need a bigger studio space so there's that too
think it's probably go across the top. This is, I think, some of the first times we've used full height bricks in this set. So much of it has been either plate or very specific, like rounded plate, but never more than like a plate and a half or something. Oh, don't regret the purchase, Cosmic. It's more, the, the problem is it's more the time sink. Like it's, you know, do I have the time to do that? And like all at once, it's it's the intimidation of how long it's going to take and all that stuff. It's not, it's not that I don't appreciate it or I think that they're cool. Um, it's just a limited time. I don't know how much I've talked about this on stream, speaking about time and things I'm, making time for hoping to have time for um i am very seriously speaking with several friends about uh learning to play guitar um and for context i'm not like a complete noob i played bass guitar in a band in a uh, university and i and i played with my friends just jamming in our houses when we were uh teenagers actually you know what i was in a band in high school too now that i think about it i can't believe i forgot about that um but i played bass i didn't play lead or rhythm so i'm looking to potentially pick up an acoustic guitar and i actually went to long and mcquade which is a local music store here recently uh thursday no thursday friday when did i go Today's Friday. Did I go yesterday? I think it was yesterday. I don't know. Does I went this week. And so I've been slowly learning about the different models of a guitar. Because, I mean, just like anything else, you get into a hobby like that, and all of a sudden, there's 2,000 different options presented to you. Now, thankfully, most of those options get narrowed down considerably with the price tag on some of these guitars. So, like, I'm not looking to spend a lot of money on something that I'm just going to be learning on. Uh, however... I also think that I'm interested enough in it to not be at the very bare bones entry level. So that's cool because it means that the conversations that I was having with the person that worked there, uh, who was very helpful, his name was Cody, um, means that I have you know, some good information to move forward with. Mix Rugan, good to see you. Hello, hello. Oh, I see, Cosmic. You've you've purchased something that was meant to be fun and it appears to be more of a of a challenge or a headache. Well, I can't say it either way. I, I think for me it was just the assessment that they appear to be complicated enough that I am not good enough of a streamer or have a community where me sitting in silence reading instructions is really kind of the vibe so that's probably what that's what i meant by the the light kits i think light kits look awesome i'm looking forward to seeing what might be involved i also was looking up how people hook up all their light kits together and they often use usb controllers and I've got some voice activated smart plugs and stuff. So it would be really cool to have the lights for a specific set and then be able to like, you know, tell Alexa, you know, hey, turn on the lighthouse or turn on the X-Wing or the, turn on Ecto-1, that kind of thing. And that could be kind of fun. Rather than having to walk over to the, to the set every time. or even set it on a timer.
Imagine walking to turn your lights on. Look, you think that it, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but one of my favorite things, when it works, I should say, is I can use one command in my living room on screen and it will turn on the Xbox, it'll turn on my TV, which is a Roku TV, and it'll turn on the TV lights, which are the Govi lights behind the TV. And it's awesome. It's so much better than sitting down on the couch and like turning this thing on and turning that thing on and then turning on the lights. Like it just, it's, it's really cool. The other thing that I really like is the reverse, being able to turn everything off. So when I leave, and these are just Star Trek nerdy things that I really like about this, but when I'm tired and I, and I want to go to bed, I can just get up off the couch and while I'm walking out of the living room, like while I'm leaving, I can say end program and the TV turns off, the Xbox turns off, the TV lights turn off, the lamp on the table if it was on turns off, like everything in the living room just goes right down to the bare ba bones and the only thing that's on is like a baseboard set of LEDs and that's it. So it doesn't get pitch dark. It just goes dark enough that it obviously feels like the room is off, which I think is great. I think it's a really cool feature that always works. Uh, the on screen seems to have like a weird bug in it where some days it works and other days the voice assistant from Amazon wants me to like clarify like, when you say on screen, did you mean on the Xbox or on the Roku? It's like, well, the command is meant to turn on both. So I mean both. Why are you asking? Why would I turn on the Xbox and not the Roku? You know, like it just, stuff like that just doesn't make a lot of sense. This has been a weird mixed bag of odd pieces and very specific stuff. When it works being the key, I'm sure our neighbors think Siri is the name of one of our kids or pets or something. The amount of times we shout, for God's sake, Siri. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you know what I, I find very interesting uh, is that uh, because I am an iPhone user and because I have uh, just the two, I've got Siri and I've got Alexa. I don't have Google Home, but my parents do and my sister does. And I find that both Alexa and Google Home are a lot faster than Siri, like a lot faster. And uh, I've had um, a little experience messing around with like ChatGPT and stuff, and that is lightning fast. It's, it's a little scary how fast it is. Now, ChatGPT, of course, on top of being fast, may also be wrong. But... If ChatGPT as a listening model released their own home um, voice assistant, the fact that you could say like, you know, 
turn on the lights and have them be on almost before you finish the sentence. I, I really feel like that would be a great, a great thing. And I'm still, I mean, I'm not entirely sure. There was, I just read a news article this morning on CBC that within a couple of steps, people have been able to break chat GPT 4.0 and get it to say some improper things that it's not supposed to be allowed to say, but it really didn't take them very long to jailbreak it and get it to ignore its parameters for safety. So that to me sounds like chat GPT is pushing things out before they're fully vetted as far as safety goes. And I'm sure anybody that's a parent out there is just like, that just seems like a whole lot of nope, whole lot of stuff I don't want to get involved in. Well, there we have it. Bag number nine. Does um does anybody here in the chat know a lot of or are you like a big fan of what's happening in AI right now? I'm going straight for the big piece. That's wrong. This is the bottom. That's cool. They lined up the colors. Two of these, and then four of these. And super fast, that's the bottom. Almost done. I guess that's this is for the stand. I wasn't actually paying much attention to uh to the stand. As we were building the cockpit, I wasn't really thinking about where the stand was going to go. I mean, the image that I have in front of me on the box, there's no stand in it, so so that's the bottom on. Let me grab this. Cosmic Dancer gifting six months of tier one to Stephen ESC. Cosmic, that's amazing. Thanks you so much. Other than playing with AI in Photoshop a couple of times, Stephen says, I haven't really tried it at all. Uh, I downloaded the new Ch chat GBT app or the, the, latest version on the iPhone, but I don't think I had chat GPT 4.0. I think I just had whatever the previous version was. Um, I used it live on the Spongebob's podcast on Monday. It's a lot of cool detail. I like that. AI machine learning is used a lot in my research, says Blast Jordan. 
as a tool for predicting a lot of properties of stuffs in research, but then AI sometimes is misused in a, a lot and generates fake data that may or may not be published somewhere. That's frustrating. I think that's the problem right now is that, you know, one of the things that would be really interesting would be if they, if one of the AI services or AI features that was built into one of these chatbots would be to proofread it's like to proofread or to fact check itself but i guess if you're using the internet to fact check then you, you can only be as good as the internet i mean and people can obviously just publish whatever they want on the internet there's nothing to stop them so unfortunately i feel like the reason and um what's the word i'm looking for not cognitive, um, critical thinking skills, unfortunately fall on humans. Uh, and while you and I are, are surely in the critical thinking clan, not many other people are, it would seem these days, which is unfortunate. This is not where I thought these were going to go. I do like to try to put these on with the, the words on them at least straight. I know it's a silly little thing. So then this goes right in the middle. Oh, these are, uh, okay. Now is this symmetrical? Also, did I just put my fingerprints on it? The answer to that is yes. So that goes like that, and then that gets attached to the front right there. Pretty good. Touches these little pieces here on the sides. A bit of a gap down there, which is not the best but I guess you can't have everything. Deep fake Joel? Yeah, that's fair. There've been some papers where people just use ChatGPT to generate the abstract introduction without even bothering to cut these sure here's a potential whatever it is for you <laughs> they often make a good laugh when science world whatever someone misses this up yeah uh i mean even i have to proofread everything because i mean we've witnessed the big hands small lego pieces i've got an iphone 12 mini so like me texting on a phone i proofread even even to people that have known me the longest and would not even blink and realize immediately that it would be a typo i will still proofread because i am terrible for sending either a typo a spell check replacement of the wrong word um it's really problematic when you talk a lot with friends about sci-fi and fantasy entertainment or the names of shows and video games or things because very often what ends up happening is um you go to input a fantasy name or something and iPhone just decides to correct it as if like, well, that's not a real word. You obviously meant something completely non sequitur as to what you actually meant. And then it, it, if it's, if you luck out in a bad way, it changes the meaning of what you've said, or at the very least, it just feels like you're making 
absolutely no sense whatsoever. So I always proofread stuff, especially when I'm talking about things that are odd or or acronyms or the thing that bugs me is like when there's a, a name or a thing that you really feel should be um in iPhone or in spell check and it's just not like you realize that this is an internet device device right and I'm talking about something on the internet and yet you uh you still insist that this is You know, spelled incorrectly. Uh, did I put that in the wrong spot? I think I put that in the wrong spot. That's there. This is on wrong. I guess we have to start over. Yeah, it didn't really give you an indication with an arrow how you were supposed to flip it. I flipped it the wrong way. That's more like it. And then we've got one of these. very small small angle that needs to happen there and this is going to go in the top here to be just the right angle hmm cool there's the face of it Uh, the tie ball goes well. Good to see you, Elkhorn. <laughs> it's very rare that you mean duck. Yes. I think I saw that on a t-shirt one time. I think the t-shirt said, I never mean duck. And I think it's very funny of just how ubiquitous autocorrect is in our society that I think most people would get that joke immediately. I don't know how often ducks come up in my regular day-to-day -day conversation. It's probably very, very few. Although I guess we were talking about them on Minecraft the other day when I was building a little duck pond in the pumpkin farm. So, you know, I may stand corrected. Man, the hoops that we're jumping through to get some of these details. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that they, to get like a certain kind of detail, which a lot of other models would rely on uh, one to maybe two pieces. This model throws anywhere from six to 12 pieces together, which is uh, 
is really interesting. I mean, it ends up looking very layered and cool in the end. So once again, not complaining, but it's a very um, labor intensive situation. Especially for something I don't think is going to actually be seen. This goes on the bottom. Some really unique pieces and not just like things like revolvers, but just unique Lego pieces that I don't use very often. And then this attaches to this here. What is this reminding me of? Oh, the Death Star. The little Death Star model had one of these little wheel things inside of it. All right, uh, two of these. I'm trying to lay things out a little bit easier for folks to see, but it might be a little bit tricky. And then this goes... Here. We've got this upside down. Cool. Oh, hey, Joel. Did you know that our very own Elkhorn is taking part in a month-long Minecraft event starting tomorrow? I, you know what? I did, and I was supposed to talk about it. I forget, for, completely forgot. Uh, raising money for Gamers Outreach. Very, very cool. Bunch of other Minecraft folks. Uh, you know, you know, you, you know, I know about it because you told me. You're right. You did. You told me, and I completely forgot. And we were supposed to put a command in the chat, I think. But um, that's very cool. Um, Elkhorn, of course, Elkhorn95 on Twitch, uh, 
if there is uh, an, a link or if there is just a list of other Minecraft channels that people can check out, then uh, I'd, I'm always happy to, to tell people where they can support a cool charity like Gamers Outreach. In the meantime, uh, let us know what you're going to be doing. Like, what are your what are your, what are your plans? Are there like build plans in place or do you have to wait until the thing starts? Is it a, you said month long thing, Cosmic? Month long, yeah. So the, for the month of June starting tomorrow would be my guess. This has to be the back. The engines and stuff. Yeah. That's what that's looking like for me, the back. I wonder why this one's a different color. Seems like an odd choice. And now we're back to step by step for these things. I guess this one is a little bit different. Maybe this will cover up the gray piece. Or the dark gray piece, I should say. I'm glad it's a little asymmetrical. That's nice. And this goes in here. So we've got this yellow bit on the back. I don't know if you can see that. Like a yellow yellow rod. And that's gonna go in there, but only one way. And so this goes on the top top right. And I just put my fingerprints all over the front of it again. I didn't realize that it, the back of it stuck out quite like that. That's cool. My, you know, my, uh, I guess my, my brain was trying to complete the shape in my head. And I was not anticipating the back of it to stick out that far. That's really cool. So you can see from the side here, like it has, it's, it's longer. It's almost like a teardrop shape. And my, the, my cartoonist brain thinks it's like a, just a sphere, like a circle, you know, but it's not, it's not round. That's cool. I like it. Also, I'm wiping this off before I forget. I mean, it doesn't matter after a month, I have to go around with like a compressed air thing and dust them all off anyway.
There's that. Man, the level of just engineering that goes into making sure that all of these flaps and everything line up and will physically work. It, I would be really curious to know just how long a set like this or anything of this caliber would take, right? And I'm sure some take longer than others for all kinds of normal, you know, normal reasons in any kind of design production. I feel like that's more pieces left over than I was really expecting. I'm curious if I've missed anything. No, it looks like we're good. Hmm. All right. That clips in there, and then this clips on the back. There are some pieces that move when you put your hands on it. And I don't, they don't, it doesn't quite fasten, but it sort of looks like it does. There's two studs right there. So that is the cockpit done. These little pieces keep on getting nudged. That's really cool. You can see the engines in the back there. Yeah, so this piece moves a little bit, but not the end of the world. Very, very cool. Cosmic Dancer, 1,000 bits, bag nine, done hype. Thanks very much. Uh, I know this is a little short for a Lego Friday, but I've got some errands I have to run. So unfortunately, we won't get to bag 10. I know it's just going to be the stand, but those things tend to be pretty technical, and I've got to get going. So uh, unfortunately, that's where we're going to wrap up for today. Uh, I think for fun, since we were joking about it earlier, uh, we'll raid Tadpole. Uh, so Tadpole's an online friend. Uh, we sent him a message earlier live. The message was simply faster. Uh, confused him. Uh, Kel was kind enough to pass it on, one of his moderators. So... When we raid Tadpole, uh, and he might have me open in another tab, so this might all be not a surprise at all. Um, simply do hashtag Joel raid with the Joel hype emote, the one that Dan just used in chat, uh, and then faster exclamation point. No explanation. Don't pass on any other information. Just faster. And we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to have to raid and run. So I won't be there to see the aftermath. Um, it might not be as funny if he's about to go for lunch, Cosmic, but um, we'll wrap it up. You can find me probably Sunday. I have to go pick my dad up from the airport tomorrow. So depending on how that goes, I may not get a stream in. So there's that. Uh, I will post on Twitter or Instagram or and Instagram, I guess I should say. Uh, tomorrow, that is um, at Joel Duggan, very easy to find to let everyone know when I'm streaming, if I'm streaming uh, this weekend. But I believe that it will indeed be um, not happening tomorrow just because of airport stuff. And I will be on the Spawn Chunks on Monday, thespawnchunks.com or the Spawn Chunks wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, celebrating episode 300 with my friend and co-host and co-producer Johnny, uh, Pixel Riffs for those of you that know, 
and we're going to be doing an all Q&A episode and it's going to be our first video episode that goes live out to the public. So make sure you don't miss that. Uh, that'll be available on YouTube for video. We're also looking into putting it on Spotify for video and everything else is going to be audio just the same way that you always consume it. I will, uh, of course, direct everyone to patreon.com slash Joel Duggan if you'd like to join the Discord, if you'd like to support the stream, if you'd like to support really cool stuff like this live on stream. I know it's a pretty chill uh, afternoon stream, but I think that that's good for a Friday. I think a lot of people might have a, a good time with a second monitor stream like this on a Friday. So I will see you all probably this weekend, but again, stay in touch on social media and I'll let you know. And uh, we'll see you then. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.